Are you going through some burdens right now and they're so heavy on your shoulders and it's breaking your back and you want someone to help you to lift up those burdens? Hi, my name is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Kerygma TV. And you have come to the right place. Right now, we're talking about taboo subjects and we're going to talk about addictions right now. And what are the bad habits that are in your life that you want to be removed by the power of God. Come, experience God, experience His blessing, watch the program, and allow Him to bless you today. How many people are happy to be here? Raise your hand. Yeah. Can you greet three people around you and say, good morning, friend? Oh yeah. Last Sunday, I was walking to go to the car and in the lobby, this guy approached me. I forget what his name was. It was his first time to be here at the feast. And then he tells me, he was thanking me for sharing my life story that morning. He said, brother, thank you for blessing me about how, how, how God has changed you and how before you were, you were physically and, and verbally abused. And then he started telling me all about his life, you know. He started telling me about how he was also verbally and physically abused. How in the morning, his breakfast was a sermon. And for lunch, his, his, his lunch was also a sermon and dinner was a sermon. And then I asked him, so what was for dessert? You know, just to keep things light because this guy was getting really agitated. Anyways, he tells me, I was so blessed to know that your past did not define your future. And that now you got to give your life to the Lord and then he asked me something that shocked me he said do you think that there is a place in your community for a guy just like me and then I, I answered him this way not only is there a place for a guy like you here in our community but I believe that this community was created for a guy just like you I told him, welcome home. If you feel like you are unworthy of God's love and that you're embarrassed and that you're ashamed and that you're unclean, I got to tell you this, my friend. You got a God who is waiting for you. He's waiting for you. Amen. That's why it's good that you came here. Aren't you glad you came here? Yes. Yep. Yep. We're going to have so much to learn today. We've been talking on the series of, uh, of, of, of taboo. Everybody say taboo. And it's been difficult so far because we've been going back to our ancestors and talk one. And then talk two was all about abuse. Today is going to be equally harder because we're going to talk about addiction. These are things that people don't want to talk about. But we need to talk about it. Why? Because people are going through it. Your family might be going through it. Your friends might be going through it. And unless we reveal it to the Lord, that's the only time that He will heal us. So if you're ready, if you're ready, let's all come in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you throw your hands in the air and say this with me? Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. Shout it out. Because I'm blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. tell you enough how excited I am to preach this word to you. God is going to set somebody free from some addictions today. You believe that? Yes. Reading from the word coming from Isaiah chapter 44, 44 verse 21. Let me read it to you. 
God says, remember these things, Jacob, for you, Israel, are my servant. God's talking to you, all right? I have made you. You are my servant, Israel. I will not forget you. I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. God is telling somebody today, return to me. Return to God, for He has already redeemed you. How many of you believe that we all have an addiction? Raise your hand. That's right. You know, it's real easy to be arrogant about somebody else's addiction and then be completely blind to your own. Because whenever we talk about the addiction of other people, we're always, oh, yeah, addict, yeah. But when you talk about your, your addiction, you don't use the word addiction. You know what you use? You use the word issue. We don't acknowledge that sometimes we're addicted to things. Some of you are addicted to, to, to shopping, for example. How many people are addicted to shopping? You know, you're spending like there's no tomorrow. Some are addicted to eating. You eat like it's the last meal that you're ever going to have. And there are even other crazy addictions. You know, I was researching in the internet a few days ago. There was this girl who was addicted to drinking nail polish. Exactly, right? There was even another girl who was addicted to eating her own hair. Crazy. Some people are addicted to playing video games till 3 a.m. You know people like that? Some people are addicted to Facebook, Instagram. Truth is, my friends, we are all addicted to something. Yes? That's true. Here's my big message for all of you today. I need you to preach it to the person beside you. Can you turn to the person on your right? And then say, trade it for something better. Trade that addiction. Trade that sin for something better. That's what I'm going to preach about. But first, let me share to you. Can I share? I want to share to you what my addiction was, all right? I was addicted to cigarettes. For 17 years, I was a smoker. My dad was a smoker. His dad was a smoker. I come from a family line of smokers. So it wasn't a surprise that I too became a smoker. Because in our house, cigarettes were like pieces of furniture. They were just everywhere. In fact, you can open a drawer. I'm not kidding. You can open any drawer in the house and you would find a pack of cigarettes. It was that easy. So at the age of 13, just when curiosity was a thing. I stole two sticks from my dad's pack, left the house, rode a jeepney, going to Tropical Hut, which is the nearest establishment in our area, and in the bathroom, that's where I lit my first cigarette. You want to know how you know that you're doing a bad thing? It's when you're ashamed to let other people see you do it. And so there I was in the bathroom, you know, so scared and so confused. I lit my first cigarette, and I puffed, and I puffed just the way that I saw my dad do it for years. And 13, 17 years later, I was still puffing away until, until the age of, of 30. Some of you don't know that cigarettes are actually a gateway drug because it leads to other kinds of drugs. So it wasn't that I was just smoking cigarettes because sooner I found myself smoking marijuana. And then it became all about drinking volumes. And then it became all about ecstasy and LSD and acid. Some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. And then it became about ketamine. You know, the horse tranquilizer. I took that. I knew I was addicted because whenever the drugs called, I came running. It had complete control over my life. Do you want to know how I was able to recover and quit from my addiction? Ask me how. A little louder, how. I got a call back. Everybody say call back. A call back means somebody called me back to tell me that I got in the music ministry here at the feast. But listen, that wasn't it. Because one time when I was in the music ministry, they made me sing a song, a solo song called Who Am I by Casting Crowns. And I couldn't sing it properly because I couldn't breathe properly. That's what cigarettes will do to your lungs. It removes the power from your lungs. And so right then and there, I made this conscious, critical decision 
that I was going to quit smoking. I wanted to trade it for something better. So in so many words, I could say that I traded my smoking for singing. I traded my sin so that I could be able to sing. I traded my vice so that I could get back my voice. Trade it for something better. And it all happened just because of a call back. God called me back. Today, God is calling some of you back. God is calling you back. He wants you to know, I want you back. I want my child back. I want my son back. I want my daughter back. I want that life back. I want your purity back. I want your integrity back. God wants you to know He wants you back. That's why it says right there, return to me. Return to me. Come back to me. Here's the good part. He says, for I have already redeemed you. Your addiction, your sin doesn't own you. God owns you. And He's setting you free right now from the chains of your addiction, from the chains of your sin, from the bondage that's taken you captive for years. And all you gotta do, all you gotta do is reach out and say, here I am, God. I'm right here. I'm returning back. I'm turning away from my sin. I'm turning away from my addiction. I'm right here. You are the something that's better. You are better. You are better. You are better than my addiction. You are stronger than my addiction. You are holier than my addiction. You are more powerful than my addiction. That's what you say today. You are more powerful, Jesus. You are better. You are better. Can I ask you to bow down your heads? Just as a sign of a surrender, can you open your hands? Just as a way of receiving something from the Lord today. God, here we are in front of you with all our sins, with all our addictions, with all our weaknesses. And we're asking you to help us. We're asking you to walk with us as we turn away from our sin. Because we know, Father, that we can never promise to never sin again. But what we can promise right now is that we will never allow our sin to keep us away from you. Never again, Jesus. Never again. We're turning back. We're turning back and we're returning to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Heaven. Give the Lord a big hand. Let your mourning, your grief, turn into dancing, your sorrow into joy. Touch somebody beside you. Tell that person God will speak to you today. That was a wonderful, powerful word. Oh, it's so good. So good, so good. Everybody say it. Trade it for something better. Trade it for something better. I want you to touch somebody beside you. Just tell that person, trade it. Trade it. Trade it. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you a true story. A friend of mine. He loves artwork. He loves antiques. By the way, if your husband loves antiques, you're lucky. When you grow older, your husband will still like you. You grow older, you increase in value. But husband, if you love antiques, don't ever tell your wife she's an antique. Just saying. So my friend loves artwork and loves antiques, and, but he doesn't have money. So what he does is he goes to thrift stores. You know those things? Secondhand stuff, he loves that. One day, 
he enters a thrift store and he sees a dusty painting on the right, right away, like the moment he entered, he said, whoop, and then his heart began to palpitate. It was, he knew it was special. He goes to the store owner, how much is the painting? And, and, the, and the owner said, 7,000 pesos. He grabs his wallet and he empties it, like, like he really empties it, and he was able to get 5,000 bucks. And then he opened his empty wallet already, he said, I have nothing anymore, I'll buy it for 5,000. And so the owner shrugged his shoulders and said, oh, go ahead, 5,000. And so my friend grabs the painting, runs, goes to an art expert because he really, really, really had a hunch that the painting was extra special. And the art expert, after examining it, says four words that floored my friend. The art expert said, this is an amor solo. And my friend was shaking with his knees and he said, how much is it? And the art expert said, 2.5 million. And so, I, I, can I give you a background story? My friend has been serving God since he was a teenager. Serving like full throttle, like, like total and complete serving God until, until he was in his 60s already. And, and he felt that God was giving him this, okay, I'm gonna take care of your retirement. You know, it, it was just a beautiful, you know, anyway, he, he was just sharing that, yeah, how, how God blessed him. But, but I, wanna, I wanna put the spotlight on the store owner. Can you imagine that guy? He, he, did, he didn't know, I'm not blaming him, he didn't know. But the absurd exchange, everybody say absurd exchange. I believe life is about making wise trades. Now that one was not very wise. He was selling a painting by national artist Fernando Amorsolo for 7,000 pesos. How absurd can you get? Everybody say, absurd. absurd. And that is the kind of absurd exchanges you and I make when we fall into sin. Because we exchange our freedom, our joy, our happiness, our souls for a flimsy, incy, wincy, polka dot, you know what I mean. A, a, a fleeting moment of pleasure for all that is of value. Am I making sense to you? That absurd exchange happened in scripture between two brothers. Can I share it with you? From the book of Genesis, there were two brothers. And let's read that. Genesis chapter 25. One day, while Jacob was cooking some bean soup, his brother, Esau, or Esau, how do you pronounce it? I made, I made research, I made research. It's Esau. Esau is the brother of Jacob. Because if you pronounce it Esau, Esau is the brother of Adidas and Betamax. And if you're not Filipino, ask your seatmate what I mean. One day while Jacob was cooking some bean soup, Esau came in from hunting. Listen to this. He was hungry and he said to Jacob, I'm starving, give me some of that red stuff. Jacob answered, oh, I will give it to you if you give me your rights as a firstborn son. Now it's a crazy deal, it's a crazy trade. It's, a, it's an absurd exchange. My rights as, as a firstborn, a title of honor, not only that, but it, it was connected to that title of honor is wealth. You want all of that for a bowl of bean soup? If I was Esau, I would say, you're nuts, brother. But he didn't say that. You know what he said? Verse 32, he said, Esau said, all right. <laughs> all right. I'm about to die. What good will I, my rights do me? It's insane. Here's the truth. All addictions will lie to you. And you know what's the lie? Ask me what? If you don't give in to this craving, 
for drugs, for alcohol, for gambling, for shopping, for whatever, eating, for video games. If you don't give in to this craving, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. And we believe the lie. Yes, I'm going to die. I'm going to die anyway. You know, sure. All right. Yeah, go, go ahead. It's a lie. Here's what will happen if you don't feed your craving. Ask me, what will happen? If you don't feed your craving, your craving will die. Give it a few minutes, give it a few hours, give it a few days, give it a few weeks, give it a few months. Your craving will die. Not you, your craving. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. And, and, and the crazy thing about this is that, you know, it, it's, the, it's that, it's that f false urgency. I want that bean soup now, now, right now. That earth, it, it's fake. It's you know, the, the root of the problem is, ask me what? The lack of patience. Yes or no? I had a friend. He said when he was in college, he had an addiction to rubber shoes. At first, I didn't understand that. Addiction to rubber shoes? You, you smell it? You, you. <laughs> He said, no. <laughs> and he told me this, that when he was in college, he just, he just could not help it. He, he would buy rubber shoes one after another. It got worse, of course, when he had a job. Like every single paycheck, two pairs, three pairs, four pairs, expensive ones, to the point when wall to wall in his house, from floor to ceiling, rubber shoes, rubber shoes, all over. And, and he said, but you know, Bo, after listening to all your teachings on finance and investing, you know, stock market, I'm 28 now. Brother Bo, I realized <laughs> if I did not put my money in rubber shoes, but instead put it in the stock market, I would be a multimillionaire by now. And I smiled at him and said, I said this, yes, a multimillionaire now who could buy some of those rubber shoes. You know, it's all about patience. Do you understand what I'm saying? The culprit is, I want it now, now. But if you could just wait a little bit, you can still have, you know, s some of those joys of, of if, what, but, but it's, the, I'm not talking about the destructive addictions, of course, but, but the other normal ones that if you could just wait a little bit more, everybody say, delay gratification. That is, that is, how many of you believe that is so important? Can I convince you some more? There was a guy in 1970, his name was Walter Mischel. He had an experiment with children. So maybe some of you read about this already. In front of kids, little kids, tiny kids, he showed them a cookie. You could, you could just imagine, actually, you had those little boys, you know, with, in front of a cookie. Ooh, you know? And he said, I can give you two if... You see, I'm going to leave this cookie in front of you, and if you don't eat it, I'm going to leave the room, and if you, if you don't eat that cookie, I'm going to come back with another one, and you'll have two cookies. Now, some of those kids waited, actually waited. They, they did not eat the cookie. They did not. And then they waited for Walter to come back, and they had two cookies. Other kids, the moment Walter left, no. Cookie Monster, la, 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 la. <laughs> ate it. You know, some of you, you don't know Cookie Monster anymore. <laughs> oh, anyone, anyone, anyone younger than 30 years old probably, I don't know. But anyway, here's what's fascinating about the experiment. Ask me what? Walter followed all those kids for the next 25 years. Crazy, right? And here's what he found out. Ask me, what happened? Ask me, what did he find out? The kids who waited did not eat the cookie, but waited for Walter to come back so, he, so, so they would have two cookies. Those kids, they had wonderful families. They had the highest incomes. Would you believe that? They were the most successful, the kids who ate those cookies, who devoured them right, right the moment Walter left the room. Those were the kids, high percentage, who ended up with drug addiction, 
and alcohol. Some of them ended in prison. Here's my point. Your muscle of delaying gratification is super crucial. It is so important. Touch your body beside you and say, strengthen that muscle. You, you, and do you know how? Can I, can I tell you how? how? Ask me how. how. Walter set up a camera to capture what was going on while he left the room. Let's get a hint from the kids who delayed gratification. You know what the kids were doing? You know when, when, he, when they left the cookie and Walter left the room? You, you know that the delaying gratification kids, you know what they did? They, 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 they saw the cookie and, 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 and they, la da 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 and my dear friends, when you stop your addiction, you cannot get rid of your addiction. I always tell people that. You know, people come up to me. So many times have people, Brother Bo, can you help me? How should I get rid of my addiction? And they, and they name the addiction. And I, and I tell them, I have bad news for you. You can't get rid of it. You cannot get rid of an, of an addiction. You can only replace it. You've got to focus on another pleasure. In other words, everybody say, what? You can't give up. You can't give it up. You've got to trade up. You've got to make that exchange. Am I, am I preaching to somebody in this room? Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And, and, and from the very beginning, I always tell people, do you want to get rid of your addiction? You cannot because you've, here's, here's the thing. Do not focus on your addiction. You've got to focus on your ambition. That's the only way. Hold God's hand right now, this moment. Don't just watch this program. Hold His hand and allow Him to bless you today. I'm going to read you a passage from the book of Hebrews that I love so much. And it, it's tough. It's a tough verse. It's in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4. And it says, together please. In your struggle against sin, you have yet to res resist it to the point of shedding your blood. My dear friend, I'm, I'm, I want to share this with you. It's, it's, it's very important. Uh, wow. If you're supposed to fight temptation to the point of shedding your blood, whoa, that's tough. You, you, you'd think that, you'd think that uh, th there are people who fight temptation and just a little bit of discomfort. Ouch, okay, I give in. You know, they, they, they can't suffer. But this verse is saying you need to fight temptation to the point of shedding your blood. Be a kamikaze pilot that when you run out of bullets, use your plane and crash it on the enemy. Die! Do we do that when we fight temptation? No. I'll tell you why we don't do it. Ask me, why? why? Because we're... You know, when soldiers go to battle, and they die in the battlefield. They do it because they have this reason that burns in their hearts. When you fight temptation and you don't even want to suffer too much, that means you have no reason to fight. There's no reason to fight. Which brings me to my story and the story that I've, I've been sharing with you that when I was addicted, when I was addicted for 20 years, you know, to porn, so many religious leaders and teachers would come to me and say, pray more. That's the reason why you're addicted. Just, just pray more, you know, and, and you'll be able to avoid it. I tried that. Read the Bible more. Go to church more. Pray more. You know, the, the 
I couldn't. And then I realized one thing. And, and what I'm going to share with you is so big and so powerful and so explosive. You, you need to embrace this next statement. And it's going to liberate you. Are you ready? Yes. Everybody say, I'm listening. I'm listening. You will only fight temptation to the degree that you love yourself. You will only fight temptation. If you love yourself in this way, that's how you will fight temptation. If you love yourself like this, then that's how much you will fight temptation. The greatest, please understand this, the greatest temptation of the devil is not pride, it's not lust, it's not greed, it's self-rejection. He wants you to reject yourself because when you reject yourself, you'll be so open to greed and to lust and to pride and to all sorts of temptations. The day I started loving myself was the day my addiction was ended in my life. That was when my addiction, basically it was this. I had something, I have a reason, I had now a burning reason to fight temptation. I loved myself, I valued myself. If you don't value yourself and if you don't love yourself, you won't fight temptation. Am I making sense to you? And it is only the love of God that can teach you to love yourself. What, what, what am I? Do you, want, do you want to help? Is, is there anybody here who wants to help someone else fight temp, uh, addiction? Maybe, maybe you've got a family member or a friend who's, who's in, in some sort of a... You want to help? I'm going to quote a profound statement by Johan Sari. And he said this. You better listen. The opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. Of course, you kind of like read that statement and you scratch your head. Well, oh, what is he talking about? Remember, many, many feasts ago, I talked about an experiment that they ma made. Oh, a long time ago. Put a rat in a cage, put two bottles of water, one regular water and one drugged water. Remember? And the rat would, the moment the rat drank from the drugged water, here, here, here was the whole, whole thesis. The, the, the rat became addicted to the drugs and just kept on drinking and drinking and drinking the drugged water and died out of starvation. And so the lesson is, they made it into a TV commercial, drugs kill. It's the chemicals in the drug that kill a person, that make the person addicted. There was a guy, his name was, his, his, his name was Bruce Alexander, an Australian, and he said, can I change the experiment a bit? Instead of a cage, let's make it into a park, a rat park with toys and food, and most importantly, a lot of rats. Now, some of you, you're kind of like feeling squeamish right now, lots of rats, Ugh. But I can assure you, if you're a rat, you like other rats. <laughs> and so imagine, and this is what he did. The, the, Dr. Bruce, in that rat park with lots of rats, he put the two bottles of water, the regular water and the drugged water. This is what he found out. The rats did not like the drugged water. Some of the rats tasted the drugged water, did not like it, and went back. To the friends and the family, here's, here's the, the, the lesson. It's not the chemicals that make you addicted. It's the cage. It's the lack of connection. It's not the substance. It's not the alcohol. It's not the gambling. It's not the shopping. It's not the eating. It's, there's a problem in the heart. It's not, are you listening to what I'm saying? The person does not feel loved. 
the person has a lack of connection. My dear friends, I'm going to announce this, and you, 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 you better listen carefully to what I'm going to say. Addiction is not a personal problem. Addiction is a family problem. Did you hear that? And that the best rehab programs, the best rehab prog programs, it's not the addict that goes to the rehab. It's the entire family that goes to rehab. It's the whole family, the parents, the siblings, going with the son or the daughter that is addicted, going through the programs, sitting down in the sessions. Because, because please understand, code, I'm not talking about codependence. I'm not, codependence is not connection, it's corruption. It's not permissive love. You, you need to be able to give gentle and tough love to, to the person. And that, that's how to help offering connection to the people. I've been talking about absurd exchanges. Can I talk about awesome exchanges? May I? Yes. This is how I'm going to end. Uh, there is this woman leaning by an ancient well, and she had in her hands a jar of water. And then a fellow comes along and offers that girl a trade, an exchange. Book of John, chapter 4, verse 7. Jesus says to the woman, give me a drink of water. And then he offers her his water. Verse 11. Those who drink this water will get thirsty again. But those who drink the water that I will give them will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring that will provide them with life-giving water and give them eternal life. Can everybody stand up? I want to I pray with you today. In fact, what I want to do is I want to offer you an exchange. Jesus is offering you an exchange. Jesus said to the woman, the Samaritan woman, give me your water and I will give you living water. Let me give you the anatomy of, of addiction. Everybody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. You are thirsty. I am thirsty. Every human being is thirsty. Ask me, thirsty for what? We are hungry and craving and thirsty to be loved. That is our ultimate thirst. We want to be loved. And when we are not loved, that is a very painful experience. Pain, there is inner pain in us when we are not loved. And because of that pain, we scramble for a painkiller. We look for a painkiller. All addictions are painkillers. And that's why we get addicted. It's the lack of connection. Now listen. Jesus is here. And Jesus was there to be that woman and he was offering her, you know, you drink that water, you'll be thirsty again. And so with all our addictions, you, you, you get your painkiller now and tomorrow you, you'll need another painkiller and you need another painkiller. Jesus is saying, C can you give me your painkiller? I will give you my power. Give me your addiction. I will give you my abundance. Give me your lies, all the lies. I will give you my love. Give me, give me your water that you'll get thirsty again and you'll get, no, no. I'll give me your water. I will give you living water, my love that is eternal. And my love will teach your heart how to love yourself. Because when you love yourself the way I love you, you're going to fight your temptations because there's something to fight for. When you value yourself, the only way for you to be free is the eternal love of God that is right here in this room. Are you ready? Are you ready to be healed and to be set free from any addiction in your life? Are you ready for an exchange? 
God is here in this room and he's standing in front of you and he's saying let's make a trade you can't give up your addiction on your own you need to make a trade you need to focus on another pleasure you need to focus on my love for you I have planted a holy ambition in your heart put your if you could just lift up your hands and if you're ready for a miracle you're standing in a place of miracles so many miracles have happened in this place Audie and I can you imagine your two preachers we were addicts and look what God did in our lives we receive miracles and you too can receive a miracle today are you willing to make this trade everybody pray with me Jesus I am giving you now my addiction give me your abundance I am making a trade I am giving up all my lies I receive your love. I'm giving up my painkillers. I'm receiving your power. Right now, I'm receiving your miracle in Jesus' name. Let's allow him to write the most beautiful story of our life. God will always be my strength. Nothing less than Christ my Savior. God will always be my hope. Nothing more than Christ alone. Your name. 
out loud once again, and this time, just our voices. John chapter 4 verse 28 it says then the woman left her water jar I, I, I love that John had to write that important fact that after conversing with Jesus she said there's no need for that water jar anymore I'm leaving it behind. I'm leaving it behind because there is a spring of living water welling up from within me. And that is the love of God. Today, I want you to make that decision. I want you to leave your water jar here. You entered those doors with burdens. Leave it here before the feet of our King. Some of you, you've, you've brought here your addictions. Leave them here. And I want you to leave this place free from the chains and the shackles and the prison bars. We're making a trade. God is saying, let's make a trade. Give me your garbage. I'll give you my gold. Give me your chains, I'll give you my freedom. God is saying, come, give me your burdens, I'll give you my blessing. Come, come, leave it, leave it. Let's pray together. Everybody say, Jesus, I am free. I leave behind anything in my life that does not belong to you. I declare I am free. I declare I am loved. I declare I am blessed. And I declare my dreams will come true.
I am so blessed and deeply grateful that you are there watching this program and being part of our family. I want you to draw in, lean in more, be my partner, pray for us, you know, t tell the world about Kerygma TV, and yes, support this program. For any amount whatsoever that you're going to give, I'm going to send you this. It is the first talk of our series, Taboo. This will bless your life. For a gift of 2,000 pesos or more, I'll not only give you one, but the entire series, Taboo. And you can watch it anytime, you know, at, at your free time. Watch it. Watch it with your family, with your friends. I'll also give you this. I want to ship this to your home. Stop Hidden Addictions. It's my book that has released a lot of people already and blessed them. And both of them send to your home. The contact details are on the screen. Just, just tell us, Brother Bo, I want to help you. I want, I want to support the ministry. I believe in what you're doing. Thank you. You can even tell us, Brother Boy, I, I want to be a monthly giver. We are looking for monthly givers so that we can do so much more for the kingdom of God. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support. This is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life. <laughs>